All right, so we're here today with uh, Medina, who is studying abroad in El Salvador. So, hi, Medina. Hey. How are you doing? Hey, Hollis. Everything's good. How about you guys? <laughs> I'm great. Uh, how did you decide to study abroad in El Salvador? Um, so since I've been here, I've been asked that question a lot by the people here. Like, why did you come here? Um, and I think for me, the main part was uh, service. It's like the service learning component to being here. Two days a week, we go to practice. And my practice site is El Pueblo de Dios in Camino, or the people of God on the way. And it's located in San Ramon, but also in Las Nubes is the volcano above San Ramon. So we do like a lot of going up the volcano and sitting with the people, hearing their story. If they need to get water, brought up to them, bring them water. Um, and like just hanging out with the kids. And really there's people want to be heard. Everyone has like their own kind of story. I heard that from Pat Range. But uh, I, I really lived it out here. Everyone has like their own story. Um, so coming down here and being in that like mind mentality of accompaniment and really, you know, trying to get an idea of where these people come from. Um, that's been like the most exciting part. And I think that the reason I chose here is because you know, I didn't want just an experience where, you know, maybe it was culturally significant, but it wasn't, I wasn't growing. I didn't want something that just, it wasn't like here. I feel like I'm growing every day. Every day I learn something new, but really the people, the stories, the realities, um, and then how I incorporate that in my life when I get home, all of that has been so worth it coming here, even though it's been, you know, difficult at times. That's why I picked this out of it. What is El Salvador like? Can you explain to Loyola? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Um, I guess if I had to describe like Salvador, El Salvador in maybe one or two words, it would be like, like the country still in turmoil. It's a, a lot of the emphasis that we like, learn about here is about the civil war that happened in the 80s mm -hmm. um, and like what led up to that and what are the ramifications of that socially and you know, there's still a big problem here with, with gang violence. Um, and that kind of stems from not only the war, but also like immigration laws in the states and how, you know, we really as the United States have responsibility for other countries and what, you know, what they have gone through and what they continue to go through today. So um, what's El Salvador like? It's beautiful. There's like, the landscapes are beautiful, depending on where you go. Like we, got, we went to Chilacanango, and that's like up in the north in the mountains. And we took a ride in a, on the back of a pickup truck. I'm like, oh, yeah, you had, a, just, you had a picture. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, my hair was like blowing in the wind. It was beautiful, but like we went over like these rivers, and like now it's a dry season, so it's not as like lush, and the rivers aren't as full. But there's still a river, and there's still like green trees everywhere, and mountains for like, years. You can't even like, see the end. And it's just like to be in the middle of that is just like amazing. It's gorgeous. But then you get to like the cities and the, not the cities, the little towns and the, where the people are, and you're hearing their story and you're really like, uh, your heart breaks for these people. You know, they've been through a lot. A lot of people had to do these things called Diaz and they, they fled into the mountainside as the death squads came in and like killed their families. And people have, you know, they don't have like mothers without kids and or without husbands. And there's like a lot of harsh realities. So to say it's just beautiful would be like not doing it justice because it's a lot of different things but the country definitely is beautiful i love it here so so it's definitely yeah. culture shock for you and a completely new oh, experience yeah. Yeah. um yeah especially coming from the states in a place of privilege and a place where you know i'm very comfortable and you know have a running have a running toilet and <laughs> and have a, a nice bed on just like you know nice floors and walls around me maybe two floors to you maybe your house or whatever that may be but coming here it's like uh for instance we stayed in the houses up in las nubes one weekend for it was overnight and i went to this lady her name is victoria and i think you might have a picture of her she's hugging me from behind but she's like a lovely lovely lady she just she was just so nice to me um i went, I went over to her house and it's on dirt floors um it's basically like they call it it's like aluminum like tops, roofs, and like wooden siding. And it's a really simple house. Um, their stove is, their kitchen is like just a stove, basically. You could just like, fits one person. And a lot of smoke inhalation gets through there, and she's not only to the best health. Um, and then going to sleep that night, uh, I went into this like 10 by 14 room with no lights. There was no windows um, on a dirt floor, on a bed, like a very thin mattress with 
mosquito nets, right? So like I didn't, see, I, I could only see what was like literally in front of my hands. I couldn't even see that, and I was like, I was so scared. I was like freaking out. But just seeing how drastically different that is from my life, and makes you appreciate it. Yeah, it makes you appreciate your own life, but it also makes you want to do something about it. And that's hard too, because you know I'm not from here. It's not my context. So how do I work within my own context and try to do good? And do well for the world, you know. That's like you know, something I've been thinking about a lot here. So, what have you? I mean, I guess what have you done about it since you've been there? What kind of community service? Um, okay, yeah. Um, well, I don't think it's hard for me to say I've done anything because I feel like I feel like I've learned so much more than I've been able to give, you know. Um, and I think the best thing I can give is my presence, you know, especially with the kids, and that's my. My communication level in Spanish, I'm not very great at speaking Spanish, but I can understand it and I could kind of like, you know, navigate with my faces and my goofiness and that's what I do. So with the kids, I connect with them the most because all I have to do is smile or say like, they call tag Mika. So like you just say, oh, you want to play tag? And like everyone's like, oh yeah, let's play tag. <laughs> so, or like and I get in like a tree with like we were in the, in the, in the coffee farms and they have those trees and kind of climb them. So like I was getting on them pretending to be a gorilla, and they were like, they were like little my like little monkeys too, and they were jumping on me. We were all climbing the trees, and like it was just like a beautiful, you know, beautiful moment that didn't need language. I didn't need to talk to them. So that was my favorite part. But really, like hearing their stories, they when you ever go anywhere, they want to give you food, they want to give you cafecito, and they want to give you time to say, and you know, whatever they have, even if it's little, they they want to give you. And the people here. Like, you don't want to romanticize it too much, but people have experienced it. They truly just welcome you with open arms. Uh, and seeing that kind of love and especially love for a stranger has been really eye opening. Just like something that's really, it's really, you don't see it in the States as much as you see it. See, see, see it. We were just talking about the scenery and what it's like in El Salvador. Do you mind showing us what it's like? Actually, you're, you're right outside of a classroom right now, right? Are you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll show you, like, quickly the UCA. Is where I go to school here. It's uh, the University of Central America, and they're like in the heart of San Salvador. Um, and then San Salvador, the San Salvador volcano, which is to my, which is to my right. Can you um, show us? That, yeah, I'll show you. Know, one second, I want to tell you. <laughs> it. It's like a really big volcano. And actually, last week we went to. It's called the Bocaron, and it's the center of the volcano. So you got to ride to the top of the volcano and climb into the, into like the crater, and like was in inside this volcano. Um, that was like really cool. But let me show you real quick. Um, That's so cool. That's <laughs> so interesting. Isn't that cool? So there are a lot of like, is there only one volcano there? Or? No, the the whole country is like riddled with volcanoes. But um, so no one's ever afraid of them kind of exploding or. Um. Well, it depends. There are there are a lot of active volcanoes here, which means they could they could explode, but. I think we're kind of safe for the time being. We're kind of we're safe for the time being. Uh, we were in the middle of the Bocaron, which is an active volcano. And the last time like it erupted was like 1917 or something. So they say like every 12,000 years, like this volcano will erupt. But then in 2001, there was like smoke coming out of it. So like they could be, <laughs> they could be very wrong. But it was just cool to be up there, you know. Well, I hope you're safe. In, yeah, they call it the source of the power, so I was really cool to be in the source of the power in the middle of this volcano, because it's like legit, you know? Is there anything you miss here at all? Like, any food and... Oh, yeah, yeah. I miss, I mean, I miss my friends so much. Oh. I miss my family. Can you give uh, a shout out right now to them if you'd like? Yeah, yeah. No, I give a <laughs> shout out to all my friends. Uh, all, all the guys, you know who you are, and then all the evergreens, and all the girls that I'm moving behind, all my friends, and great Tom, of course, but I miss everybody. <laughs> I just miss everybody so much. Like, uh, it's it's tough because like the communication here isn't as just like easy. My mom doesn't know how to do Skype, and calling up through the calling card, and I can keep refilling that. So it's not like insanely difficult. It's just a, one more thing to think about. And she was sick recently, so like having to like figure out you know when I can call her was like just for you. Um, so missing my family, my friends. That's one thing I really miss. Um, I miss I miss like a good fast food place. Like they have them all here too, but like you know, being in this experience, we're trying to like live a little more simply and trying to really like not like live as an, as a Salvadoran, but like get to know the people, the food, and eat the food that's prepared for you. 
So we do that. Um, and going to a Wendy's is like, could be frowned upon depending on who you're talking to. Right? So yeah. <laughs> I just miss like a good like chicken sandwich from Wendy's. Like, <laughs> I always hear that. A hamburger, a <laughs> chicken like, sandwich. It's... Always. Yeah, or like a nugget, a nugget or something, you know? But this is like a different, you know, while I'm here, I'll do as they do. You know, what? when in Rome, do as Romans do. When in El Salvador, do as Salvadoran. That's what I'm doing. Enjoy the food water there, though, so. <laughs> uh, what advice can you give students currently looking abroad for, I mean, currently looking into El Salvador? Um, well, I would just say pick pick the place, and if you have the opportunity, you know, realize you have a great opportunity in front of you to pick whatever, almost whatever program you want, you know? Um, and while you're doing that process of, like, discerning and thinking about what you want to do, pick a place that seriously interests you. Don't just go because, like, maybe, like, the bar scenes are cool or, or because, like, you read about it in a book once, but really just like look at where you're going to go and see if it interests you and why it interests you, you know, and hopefully you're making a good decision, you know, uh, for yourself too. Because I think be going abroad, the biggest thing you can do for yourself is allow yourself to grow, and allow yourself to really come back a different person, different change person. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are some people who maybe went through their experience and come back feeling like they hadn't done much changing. And if you are thinking about El Salvador, I can assure you, for better or for worse, the program is like, if you love it or if you hate it, you're going to come back a changed person. And I think that I've already experienced that a lot. Um, I already know that I felt, I felt growth, I felt change. So when I come back, I, I think I'll be proud of, you know, the decisions I've made and the people I've met and, you know, the experience I had. So as long as you, you just pick where you want to go, pick where you love, like get something, get, get passionate about it. Don't just go just to be like, ah, I want to go because everyone else is going. Go because you want to go because it's going to be a good experience. Thank you so much, Medina, for sharing your experiences. Thank and you guys. I learned a lot. I'm sure Loyola just learned a lot about El Salvador. <laughs> and I hope you Oops. keep having a great time there and keep learning. <laughs> Thank you, Hollis. Thank you, Graycom. Thank you, Loyola. Um, I miss everybody back home. I miss all you guys. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon. And we'll talk and we'll chat about my experience here. So much love. Thank you for watching Loyal Abroad. Remember to tune in on Channel 33 or check in online at graycom.tv. See you next time.